What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today, we are going to be looking at newly signed safety Eric Murray. You know, it's funny. I think everyone and their mama was pissed off when we signed him. It was easy to say we overpaid for a nobody, someone who he couldn't even make it on the damn Browns. If you thought this was one of the worst free agent signings we've ever had, you're not alone. I hated this signing. I called him Eric F Murray until like two weeks ago. I tried my best to ignore this man's existence and wait for the last second to watch his film, hoping we'd sign someone else and I wouldn't have to put myself through this torture. But Eric Murray is actually a perfect example of why you gotta watch film when evaluating a player and not jumping to conclusions. Don't rely on stats, don't rely on the narrative from the media or from Twitter, watch the film because the film don't. Well you know how it goes. So with that said, I was pleasantly surprised by the Eric Murray film. Do I think he's a star? Hell no. But he's no scrub either, and can be very valuable to this team. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now, let's break down the film of Eric Murray because the film don't lie. The best quality that Murray brings to the team is that he's an aggressive and sound tackler. And while he can do that from anywhere on the field, and we'll get to that, I think the main role that we're going to see him in is as a box safety. And he should excel there tackling wise. The Texans played a lot more single high defenses this past year, with Jay Reed being the single high guy, and they want to add another safety into the box to help out and run defense, and Eric Murray can be that guy for us. You can see here that the Broncos are going to be able to block up everyone except for Murray, and so he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one with running back Phillip Lindsay, and he's got to make that tackle, and luckily we can trust him to make this tackle 99 out of 100 times. In a cover one look here, which the Texans ran a lot last season, Murray's going to do a great job to come down from his box role and fill his lane aggressively making the tackle. Now those must have seemed like pretty rudimentary tackles, and they were. Now here with the Browns, he was playing a lot of nickel, and you gotta be able to tackle as a nickel, and he's able to chase down Lamar Jackson, the Lamar Jackson, arguably the best running quarterback in the league. He's able to chase him down, he has outside contain here, he doesn't let him get the edge, which is really, really tough to do, but Eric Murray's speed and pursuit is very, very nice, and that's gonna be a good addition to the team. So the first two run stops I showed you were him coming downhill and stopping kind of like the north-south running game. However, with modern offenses, they love to attack east-west, they love to spread you out and try and attack the edges as much as possible. And like on the Lamar Jackson play and like on this play, Eric Murray has the speed to get to that edge, to get to the sideline and shut plays down. Now against Brandon Cooks here, he takes a great angle, makes a sound tackle, he's not overly aggressive in his pursuit angle, he's just very reliable. Now the Texans can't just sit in single high defenses, cover one, cover three all day, and Murray can come downhill from two high positions as well. It makes really sound tackles in the run game and this is a play that i broke down on my twitter account along with some other couple plays of eric murray a couple weeks ago so if you want to get breakdowns on these players a couple days or a couple weeks in advance follow me on twitter at texans underscore thoughts i would really appreciate that so the next most common coverage the Texans defense runs is quarters defense and you know quarters is trying to take away the deep routes with these four deep quarter zones and that leaves only three zones underneath and so it can be very hard to guard underneath routes and that's why safeties they're asked to do a whole lot in quarters and they have to be very aggressive in playing downhill and helping out on tackles because as you can see here there's going to be this route open over the middle and this linebacker is just not able to cover it and so Murray's going to be able to come all the way down from his high positioning to make this great tackle very quickly and not allow any yak. When Murray tackles you, he tackles you. You feel it. Like this one here, he lands a big hit. I don't know how this wide receiver caught the ball, but Murray's got a little hit stick to him. Okay. Now the Chiefs actually mainly used him as a single high safety and he was very good tackling here as well. As a single high, you essentially just want to be that safety blanket. You never want to miss a tackle and you essentially want to stop those 10, 15 yard gains from getting any bigger or from getting into the end zone even because as that last line of defense it's really all up to you and jay reed has shown a great ability to do that but jay reed's also a very versatile safety we can play him in the box as well and so with murray we can have them as interchangeable guys who you can both count on them as that last line of defense and this is the best tackle i've seen from him in open space one-on-one -on -one against duke johnson we all love duke johnson if you don't get the hell out of here i love duke johnson he's one of the most elusive running backs in the nfl and right here look how quickly eric murray comes downhill he's one-on-one -on -one against duke johnson and he's got to make a tough tough tackle in open space competition is a big thing to look at you know he's not just doing these against scrubs we saw he tackled brandon cooks we saw he's tackling duke johnson now two of the more elusive guys in the nfl 
Now tackling is great, but in the NFL, if you can't cover, then you're not going to be very useful on the field. And Eric Murray, he's not a liability here. He's not really great at anything, but you can ask him to fill a lot of different roles. And we're going to go through those today. So first of all, we saw that he can tackle from the box. Well, he can also cover from the box. He's often asked to come down into a robber role and play the middle of the field in a cover one. And you can see he takes away the deep over route here and doesn't even get targeted. And so that same aggressiveness, that same drive downhill that helps him out in the run game really helps him out in the passing game as well. And this is a really great play to showcase that here where there's going to be a bust in coverage by the cornerbacks at the bottom of the screen. But Eric Murray's going to be able to acknowledge that really quickly and be able to erase their mistakes. And so you can see from this angle that these cornerbacks, 22 is supposed to have whoever releases to the outside and 23 is supposed to have whoever releases to the inside. And you can see here that Cooks is lined up to the outside and Robert Woods is lined up to the inside. And so that's who the cornerbacks think that they're going to take respectively. However, when the ball is snapped, the wide receivers run a switch release where it's just like it sounds, they switch the way that they're running. And so now Cooks is actually going to the inside and 23 has got to pick him up. And he doesn't recognize this quick enough and leaves him completely wide open. However, Eric Murray does notice this and him coming down in this robber role to patrol the middle of the field, he's able to cover Brandon Cooks for what would have been a huge gain if he didn't recognize this quickly enough. And that IQ and route recognition is really, really great to see out of your safety. And smart safety play like this is why safeties are so, so valuable. They make corners job so much easier and can make up for any mistakes that they make by having their back. Now in those few games that he did start for the Browns, they played him exclusively at the nickel position. And I only like this if he's playing zone coverage, which he does pretty well. He's got good recognition here where the Browns, they're in cover three and and murray's tasked with this buzz zone and so he's like kind of playing the flat but it's a very deep portion of that sideline of the field and he does really good to try and bait the quarterback here he knows that there's a route going out to the flat but he also knows that there's going to be a route going over his head and so of course you always want to take away the deepest route and just give them underneath and then try and rally and tackle and so he does a very very good job to kind of bait forward making it look like he's going to go after that flat route and then hauling ass going backwards keeping his eye on the quarterback reading the throw reading the trajectory of the ball and getting back into the catch point to make a pass breakup and that's an honestly a really really great play out of eric murray and this is exactly where i want him to be playing this box role playing these underneath zones whether he's gonna be playing in a robber role over the middle of the field or in a buzz role or on the sidelines this is where you're gonna be able to maximize his talents in terms of coverage now versatility is the name of the game in the nfl and the more you can do the better and he can definitely play single high safety from time to time and i honestly didn't think that he was going to be able to from what i had heard around twitter but he showed the ability to just never get beat deep and always keep everything in front of him and that's essentially what you want from your single high safety he's not going to be earl thomas whatsoever showing off ridiculous range and racking up the interceptions he's not that good but he can be someone who, if Reed gets injured or if you want to play him in the box a couple snaps, blitz him, then you're going to be able to get away with Murray as a single high occasionally. Here's a really great play that I want to break down where he goes from the box to the single high. I love that post snap movement and he makes up for the cornerback's mistake who gets beat on the double move and he shows off good range going from the hashes to the numbers and being in position to break up that ball. So I've shown the good and we've also got to look at the bad because Eric Murray is far from perfect and there's a reason why he's really just been a role player all of his life and his man coverage is the worst thing about him. He struggles in a couple areas, the first one being he's just too small. Via pro football reference, Eric Murray's listed at 5'11", barely 200 pounds soaking wet and that's just not the size you'd want out of your box safety and so he's lined up on these huge tight ends 6'5", 6'6", who are strong dudes and just push him out of the way very easily. And there's just nothing he can do. He's also just not a very agile and fluid athlete. Sure, he has straight line speed, but in coverage, honestly, your agility and the fluidity of your hips is way, way more important. And he just doesn't have that ability to stick with even tight ends when they're making their breaks on their routes. Whether it's in press coverage, he's just not very good at the stem and is either pushed off or just not able to flip his hips and drive quick enough downhill. And that's especially apparent in off coverage where he doesn't take great angles to close in on the route. Now, I wouldn't say he's completely helpless in this area. And before when I talked about him being too small and being pushed off, that happens a good amount. 
but it's not from a lack of mentality. He's a fighter. He's a dog. He loves to be physical. Whoever he's lined up against, he's never backing down from a fight, and I really respect that. So unfortunately, there are going to be those couple plays where he's going to get bodies. He's going to get pushed out of the way because he lacks the size. But like I said, it's not a mindset thing, and that's what I love to see of my players. And he can get a little handsy downfield. He's trying to find that balance between good coverage and DPI. He got flagged a couple times for it, but overall, I love that he's trying. And so that kind of leads me to my next part of he's not the greatest at the catch point and here he makes a good play but for the majority of the time he's losing at the catch point because he's going up against these guys who are bigger than him have longer arms than him he's not able to fight back into the catch point and make a play on the ball and that's a huge detriment because even if you play good coverage all the way throughout the route, at the end of the day, what really matters is who catches the ball. And if you can't stop them from catching it, then all that work that you did before to get to the catch point, it's worthless. And so like I mentioned before, with the Browns, he played only in the nickel. They didn't play him at safety whatsoever. And his coverage in the nickel was very inconsistent. It's hard to tell if that was really a strength or a weakness of his because there would be some plays where he would look awful and he'd get beat easily. And then there are also plays where he would look good and he would smother great slot wide receivers and make it look easy. I think the same positive and negatives that apply to his coverage against tight ends applies to his coverage against slot wide receivers. You know, sometimes he can be really physical, really handsy, be all over the route and shut them down. And then other times he's just not quick enough, not a good enough athlete to keep up with a really quick, really, really good route running slot wide receivers. And so that brings me to my next point where, yeah, he can do a whole lot of things. He can play a lot of different roles for the defense, box safety, single high safety to a high and quarters. You can play him in the slot a little bit, but he just doesn't really excel in any one area and he can be inconsistent in all of them. Take this zone coverage rep for example, he's going to come down and play a robber role yet again which I've said he's great at but then he's not going to see the route that's going over his head and he notices it way too late and gives up a touchdown as a result of it. Or how about this rep in single high where he gets beat on a double move by the wide receiver who's faking it outside then cuts it inside and he just doesn't have the athleticism to catch up and break up that ball. And so it's great to have someone who's versatile and if someone gets injured, he can come in and play in all these different roles and fill in for them, whether it's single high, box, slot, whatever. And, but with the contract that we gave him, that's starting money. In an ideal world, Eric Murray is a third safety where you can ask him to do whatever and he can just do his job. You know, he's not going to be a liability, but he's not really going to excel either. All right, that'll do it for my Eric Murray film breakdown. So for those who recommended Murray, thank you. Shout out Ricky Antoine, Corey Van Anenem, sorry, Eric Ar Arispe, Colton Zeitner, Tito, and All Might. I really love interacting with y'all in the comments and appreciate your input, feedback, and support. And I apologize if I pronounced anyone's names wrong or missed your comment about Eric Murray. Now back to Murray, I think I went into his evaluation with such low expectations that his tape really got me excited. I thought we were going to be trotting out a complete trash can next to Jay Reed at safety, but Murray isn't horrible. He's such a great example of why narratives suck and you shouldn't just agree with them blindly. The film has all the answers and completely turned around my opinion on Murray. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one. I appreciate you. The question of the day is, do you think Murray will ever actually get the media's respect or is his narrative set and done as a shitty signing? Let me know. Also, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered. I write articles about more Texans related stuff on our awesome website and we've got a great weekly podcast on all your typical platforms. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Take care, everyone, and remember, the film, don't lie.